everybody how's it going in this video i'm going to talk about the ethics of writing protestware and whether it's ethical to write a protestware if there is a greater good behind it or is done with a positive intention obviously this uh, video inspiration is as a result of the note ipc fiasco and i think since the topic is very hot it's very valuable to discuss this sort of stuff and build a discussion around it so that we can reach to a better understanding on how to move forward and navigate let's say in the open source community better sorry in advance that the topic is not really related to the open so uh, open bsd uh, but i think it's very important to have this talk and i think i can share my points and my understanding about this situation as a software developer share my experience and also how i feel as a former open source contributor this is the agenda that i have prepared for today First of all, I want to give you a disclaimer. I do not take side with Russia over this conflict, not only over this conflict, but over any other conflicts that uh, has happened in the past also. And not only Russia, but over the conflicts that, for example, United States has bombed Middle Eastern countries. I also don't like it. Do not take my words out of the context. Do not think that I'm poor Russian or things like that. Now that is out of the way, let's talk about my take on the portisware slash malware. About this node IPC, let me share my experience, what has happened and what is my experience as a software developer that I have to deal with the consequence of it. So in my company that I'm working at, the security team has got overly paranoid as a result of this node IPC. Of course, he had some background and roots related to the log4j incident, but that's an entirely different situation. And they got a, a bit suspicious of the open source now and they do not see it as a something very positive and of course i know that they are not very educated in that front but nonetheless if you have seen uh, many negative news about open source then automatically you start thinking whether really open source is something good for me or good for a company or no and this node ipc incident basically was the final nail in the coffin and now they are overly paranoid about the situation so for any uh, open source library that I use in my code, I have to actually make a justification. I have to get an approval, this and that, and this is not something that I like in general. About the open source contribution perspective, let me share my uh, feeling about it. I feel a betrayal because if tomorrow, let's say I find out in some of the uh, libraries that I have uh, or the repositories that I have contributed in the past, the authors, they gone crazy and they have uh, injected malwares in it. I don't feel good about myself and I feel betrayal because I didn't sign up for that and I thought that I'm contributing to something positive, not to something negative doesn't matter what's the original author's uh, ideas were behind it right and i'm assuming the same happens uh, the same is applicable to the people who were involved in the node ipc uh, development if there is any but this is something that i would assume it may happen unfortunately in the future too we had situation like that before about the linux kernel to certain degree but that wasn't 100 percent related to this i remember in the situation of the linux kernel many contributors they they actually they threatened the the let's say the linux community that they are going to revoke their code because gpl2 provided that facility so this is something that uh, have to be kept in mind and we obviously do not want to destroy the community that we have built unfortunately things like a portisware or malware that are injected into the uh, open source libraries gives a very bad reputation to open source which i'm going to talk about it in the in my next point and also i would like to uh, iterate over the fact of the security team that they now have more uh, positive actually views toward the proprietary software because when you actually purchase a proprietary software or a proprietary uh, libraries or whatever you need to sign a contract to get the uh, licenses for it and if there is something fishy going on in the software or in the library you, since you have a contract with them 
you can actually take a legal action how it how it's going to work out exactly i am not entirely sure i'm not an expert on it but you certainly can take legal action because you can justify that they have breached the contract or they have put the things that they didn't mention exactly in the contract and in all open source uh, licenses that you see there is a clause there that the uh, authors of the code they are not responsible for anything they are not liable for anything and as a result the companies are tight-handed they cannot go and individually sue developers and also good luck with finding them many of them they just have an account they there is no trace of them so it's very difficult to actually go after them which is a good thing in my opinion but this also creates some sort of like a scarcity mindset on the big corporations that they may think that anything open source it could be negative but again i talk about it actually on the second point now i want to actually turn the table and actually see it from a different angle from the angle of the people who were residing in those countries or who are anyway connected to ip addresses associated with those countries and the business owners that were affected they most of them they are innocent people they have nothing to do with the policies and the politics and what's going on there and uh, it's very unfair i think to them that uh, that the hard drive contents uh, got wiped this is my perspective and it's very douchey move from the original from the node ipc author and they didn't sign up for this kind of stuff and expecting them to go and change everything in the in regards to their foreign policies is very naive assumptions and it's coming from the uh, mouths of people who haven't uh, experienced living in the countries that are run by talks and uh, let's move on to the second point which is about the impact on the free slash open source community i think the fiasco has created a, a bubble around the open source community in general and it's and it has given actually a very bad reputation to open source and now many people they associate open source as a result of all those incidents with something that is buggy with something that it means viruses with something that means it has a security holes vulnerabilities etc etc this is a perspective from an average Jew, I would say, in the society. And it's not my perspective. I'm sure it's not your perspective. Otherwise, you wouldn't have subscribed to this channel. The thing is that normal people, they just read the headline and then they make a judgment. To prove that I'm right, uh, I refer you to watch a video from Louis Rossman. He created about a policymaker on one of the right to repair hearing. That the policymaker thought that the right to repair means that you are going to open source your uh, product, and and he concluded that open sourcing a product means everybody can access to the source code. That hence they are going to write viruses for it. And these are the policymakers in the one of the most advanced country in the world. They are so out of touch from the technology world. And good luck with good luck convincing them in your uh, advancement to say that okay open source is something positive and the same ap applies to the normal people in most of the cases to the people that are not let's say tech savvy and also on the other hand uh, there, there were many companies in the past that they were not in favor of uh, open source and uh, contributing to the open source doing that kind of stuff they were not advocate of open source or put it simply they were enemies of open source now they have a better excuses to avoid open source because they say you see that there is no audit on the open source codes and as a result somebody can go and inject the malware into it inject the port as well so they can take things out of the context and then twist it according to their needs and promote their own agendas so it has a very negative impact on open source unfortunately and it is very sad to see that uh, once a great community has turned to this uh, situation has degraded to this level this doesn't mean that you are free and you have a free pass to go and harass the node ipc author do not do that i have already heard that somebody has hacked into his twitter account and also leaked some of his private messages which is a very distasteful and douchey act in my opinion don't do that kind of stuff don't go after the node ipc author i have a better remedy or to deal with the situation that i'm going actually to talk about it on point five just ignore uh, the node ipc author ignore everything 
and do not try to actually stir things up further a piece of advice to the people who are thinking this sort of movements this sort of activities act activities or being uh, so overly emotional is something positive and they are thinking to do the same thing uh, again or doing something similar just do not do it think about the consequences of your actions before don't make a decision or take an action because you are just emotionally sad or not stable or or this and that just be careful about it in many countries writing a protest where a slash malware is considered as a crime and they are gonna put you in a jail with criminals with drug lords with the murderers with people that they have done disp uh, despicable things and if we are honest with ourselves we as software developers we not we do not belong uh, to the criminal group but good luck with convincing a judge that you have done it uh, because you were uh, i don't know emotionally whatever or you have done it because of a greater good and it's not a malware it's a protestware now my last point is about how to move forward and how to deal with this situation this is the beauty of the open source you can take a library you can take any code you can fork it you can modify it so this is going to have to be applicable to the node ipc as well if you don't like it if you don't like the author if you don't like the the name of it whatever the things that comes with it at this point just take that library just fork it modify it rename it and then advertise it and then basically operate within the mean of the open its open source license and advertise it and do whatever you want with it you can even charge for its support if you wish and believe me if it's good people they are going to use your library and they are going to support you and soon this node ipc is gonna be a part of the history so this is how you have to tackle with it not just targeting the author work the repository rename it remove the extra stuff from it make a good support for it and people they will switch over to yours and that's it you win already that's all for this video as always have a great time and cheers Yes.